Hello? Okay. Yeah, so let's continue. Um, Casey is not yet there. Yeah. Yeah, let's continue with your discussion um, mm -hmm. about uh, the perception and attitude of uh, people, whether they prefer a vaccine against COVID or they prefer a treatment, mm -hmm. a medical mm -hmm. treatment when they become mm -hmm. sick. So we, we are discussing a cross-sectional study. Mm -hmm. Are you asking me? Hello? Are you asking me? Yeah, you were the one uh, discussing the project on COVID. <laughs> no, that's right. No, my concern was this is, we say it is not a comparative study, it is not for to compare. It is to, to see about the prevalence of the interest of the people of certain community or uh, population. So here I am trying to see the, um, it is not only about the perception or attitude about the vaccine, about the treatment, which one they prefer it. And they don't bother about the vaccine. Um, and if they really get sick, they will go to the hospital for the treatment. They will prefer this one or they will go to the vaccine. So they will Yeah, so you, you are just looking at the characteristics of that vaccine. population. You want to know uh, who prefer what, yes. okay? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in, in that case, this one is still fit. This design is still fit there, cross-sectional design. Yes, it's a cross-sectional design. Let's look at the indication when to conduct a cross-sectional study, okay? Mm -hmm. So we conduct a cross-sectional mm -hmm. study uh, to estimate when we want to estimate the prevalence of a health condition or a prevalence of a certain behavior or a certain risk factor or a potential, a potential for disease, you know? So whenever you want to estimate the prevalence of a health condition, then you enroll those patients at a specific point in time, you know, only once you see them you describe or you characterize that population, then you can estimate the prevalence of any health-related condition. So you can do a cross-sectional study. Or if you want to learn about the characteristics, you know, such as knowledge, attitude, practice of individuals in a population, okay? So this is also a cross-sectional study because you just want to learn about the characteristic of that population at a specific point in time. Remember that people's knowledge can change. You know, at some point, the person can become well-informed, then he can also change his opinion according to the new information he got. So you are doing it at a specific point in time. You can describe to say, this is what you found at the time of the study, okay? But that can also, that opinion can change sometime. You know, that's why uh, those kind of study, cross-sectional design, when you look at uh, evidence-based research, they are not uh, high level, they don't provide like a high level evidence, you know? So the level of evidence is weak because you know, uh, people can change their opinion. People can, uh, you know, change their practices uh, according to uh, new understanding or new information. So, so if you find it at a specific period of time, you know, uh, you can just describe what you found at that point in time. You know, so that's why cross-sectional design provide you with a weak level of evidence. Okay, so you can also do it to monitor trends over time with uh, by doing serial cross-sectional studies. That's what I said. 
That's why some people confuse it with incidence study. You know, when you have serial uh, cross-sectional studies, so you do at one point, uh, let's say you study this particular condition, then at after maybe a few months, you do it again, you repeat, then you repeat again or you repeat, then it gives you a trend. Now that trend does not make it an incidence study. It is still a cross-sectional study, you know, because it's done at a specific point in time, you know, but it helps you to define a trend of a disease or a condition, okay? Uh, there is also someone who is doing a cross-sectional there. Um, he said, Awonke, Awonke, are you there? Yes, Prof. So you, you are doing a cross-sectional study? Yeah, yes, Prof. Uh, it will be, but I, I, I was uh, facing a, a problem. Uh. Now, when I'm looking at what you are saying, you are saying it's uh there's no comparison so so what how well how did you want to do the comparison what was well, uh, that what is giving me a major problem into coming with a solid uh topic because i was actually comparing two schools oh. i wanted one in rural areas and i wanted uh one in oh. urban oh. yes different levels of, of, of school of, mm. of, of schools mm. and they compare the, 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 their knowledge if uh yes just compare their knowledge and uh, evaluate evaluate their knowledge of uh, well, the, 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 the problem is that uh, when you do a cross-sectional study there um you are looking at you you will see the knowledge or attitude or practice in a school <laughs> a and you also so you 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 describe the characteristic of the population in a once in a school A, and you describe also the characteristic in a school B. You know, yes. well you can find the differences. You can find maybe this school in an urban area they are more knowledgeable uh, for yes. on this that particular subject as compared to school uh, B in a rural area. You know. But yes. uh, but then you are just going to speculate. You say, okay, probably uh, people in uh, urban area they watch TV, they see the information, they they are more aware about the topic than people in the rural area. But you are not doing a a, a direct comparison where uh, you 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 if you want to to do direct comparison, we will see uh, other studies. Describe. Um, that can help you. So in cross-sectional study, there are those type of comparison, but you are not like having a control group. You don't have a group that, you know, you see this is a control and um, that now we are, we are comparing them. But you, you can describe on the characteristics of a population in a school A versus a school B. You understand? Yes. Yeah. So oh, there is no control. Yeah, there's there is no control. No control. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let, let's say what you, you want to do, it like this example here. Uh, in this study where they try to, to look at the prevalence of, uh, uh, of, uh, of violence, you know, in the household, violence against uh, pregnant women, you know, where they look at uh, two cities in Tanzania, you know, they try to look at yes. what is happening in Mbeya and what is happening in Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. So they, they try to describe the characteristics um, of the population in terms of the rate of, of uh, violence against, against women. You know, they just report, they say the violence experience was, it was experienced by 7% of the participants in Dar es Salaam and 12% in there. Oh, I see. You understand? Yes, I do, Prof. Yeah. 
So, so it's not like uh, one was a, a control group of another. No. So they, you see, they, yes. they just describe what they found in one city and what they found in another. And you can also describe what you found in a school A and what you found in a school B. That, then you can speculate the reason for the differences. I see. You see, you understand? Yes, yes. yes I do. Yeah. Uh, any, anyone else uh, doing a cross-sectional study uh, in the group? Or, or planning to do a cross-sectional study? Or oh, cylinder? Lisa, you're doing a, a cross-sectional study? Uh, don't, uh, uh, not yet, not yet, but uh, mm. I don't know, I don't know if it is possible to, to give uh, my, an idea of uh, this uh, type of study. Ah, okay. Okay. And uh, I, 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 I saw, I saw that uh, the whole cross-sectional study, uh, it is like, uh, as example, Mm. Uh, you, 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 you lead, you lead uh, a study uh, about, uh, uh, about uh, uh, the, the, the in, 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 uh, intestinal, intestinal, intestinal uh, cancer. Intestinal parasite. Yes. Yeah, parasite. Mm. Uh, to see. Uh, the relation, the relation between uh, the the eating uh, of uh, of meat. Ah, okay. Yes. If, uh, okay. The meat. Yeah. The meat can uh, can uh, can uh, can. Okay. Can, uh, can I say? Uh, can uh, make? Uh, can make a, 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 an intestinal an intestinal uh, para para. Uh, cancer. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, in in the study in the study uh, they saw that if uh, uh, the the other follow follow a group of uh, a group of persons mm. and uh, he saw he saw that uh, if you eat several several meats. Mm. If you eat meat uh, in quantity, mm. you are exposed mm. to develop to develop uh, an intestinal cancer. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. There was a cross-sectional study. That, that's not a cross-sectional study. So we will uh, we will look at the that type of study uh, next. Okay. So, so that's not okay. a cross-sectional. Yeah. Uh, Casey, your hand was up. No, please. Yes, yes, yes. Just uh, to request the colleague, I think there are a lot of noise behind the background here. Ah. So if they can mute, if they are not. Yeah, so please, yes, sorry, if you are not uh, speaking, you can uh, mute your mic. Then uh, you can unmute if you want to, uh, to say something. Okay, thank you. Okay, so a cross-sectional study, we say that you are doing it at one specific, you want to study the characteristic of a population at one point in time, okay? And you are done. So it helps you to determine the prevalence of a specific condition. And you can also look at the, you can look the factors that are associated with uh, that condition. So at one point in time, okay? So there is no control group, nothing, okay? Um, that's what we call a cross-sectional study. Um, now there is also, that's a prevalence study, but you can also do an incidence study. Now incidence is about new cases only. Now remember prevalence is about old and new cases, okay? So, so, so when you, you, you look at the, the prevalence of people with intestinal parasites, they come into the clinic, 
um, you enroll them, you collect uh, the specimen, you go and analyze and found how many have intestinal parasites. Okay, so that's the prevalence. It's one point in time, but you don't know if it's a new problem or if they used to have it for a long time. So it's both old and new cases. But if you have people who don't have any disease, okay, then you fall, then you, you, you try then to see that they are developing that condition for the first time. So that is an incidence. That is an incidence. Now let, let's take a good example. Uh, let's have a patient with a COVID-19. Let's say you draw blood from people, a population, you know, you receive uh, patients or participants, you draw blood from them, you test for uh, antibodies, anti-COVID-19, okay? You test for antibodies, anti-COVID. Now, and you, you see the number of people who give positive results. Do you call that a prevalence or an incidence? Is that a prevalence or is that an incidence? Yes, Issa. So, uh... Please try to repeat uh, this example. Yeah. So, so let's say in your hospital, you, yes. you are all 100 patients. Okay. And you collect blood from 100 patients. You test them, you, you, you test for antibodies, the presence of antibodies, anti-COVID anti-COVID-19. Yes. Okay. You find that 50, okay. 50 of them, um, no, no, not 50, let's say 20 of them uh, are positive. So you okay. have 20 divided by 100, you know, so 20%. Yes. So you found that 20% of them uh, show positive results show positive okay. results uh, for antibody, anti-COVID. Now that's 20%, is it prevalence or is it incidence? Is it incidence? Uh, 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 Oh, your, your network is disappearing. The, the, there, is, there is new case of COVID-19. I said that. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> you see, you, it you is can an, be, It is an incidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, you can be tempted to say it is an incidence, but the problem is antibody results you don't know which antibodies were there. Let's say antibodies okay. can be uh, IgG or IgM, you know? If it's an okay. IgM, okay. it can tell you it's something new. It's but a, if it's an it's IgG, yes. it can tell you it's something old in the past. It's old, okay. You understand? So you don't know whether it's a new case or it's an old case. So, okay. so you cannot call it incidence, then you call it prevalence because you don't know uh, whether it's new or it's old. But, okay. but if we take the same scenario, you are all 100 patients, you take a nasopharyngeal swab, okay? You, yes. you take a nasopharyngeal swab, then you test it to try to see the presence of antigen for COVID, Okay. Then you find it it's positive, then you can call it an incidence because those are new cases only. New cases. Okay. You understand? So yes, so incidence, incidence is when you are 100 percent sure that those are only new cases. They are occurring for the first time. They are new. 
but prevalence is a combination of previous cases and new cases. So sometimes you are not able to separate old and new. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So 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 here, for example, in this population. Uh, you can see the incidence of people dying from diabetes uh, over the years. So you can see the new rate. So it gives you a good trend every single year within a specific population. You know, the incidence of people dying with diabetes over the years. So that's the incidence. So uh, remember, we are discussing descriptive studies. We say that we have five types of descriptive studies. Yes, Bully? Bully? Your hand is up. When time does contribute to whether this is an incident case or an, a prevalence case, I'm asking in the sake in the in, in the case of let's say HIV tests, mm -hmm. then we'll say the incidence is people who tested positive from this period to that period, and then beyond that, then mm -hmm. that is prevalence. How does it go? Does time contribute in 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 defining whether yeah. this is a prevalence study or a yeah. okay. incident? Okay. Thanks. Now, now let's say you have uh, people who are HIV negative. Or, um you know so you start testing them now you start testing them now they are testing hiv positive for the first time if they are testing hiv positive for the first time you say this is incidence okay this is incidence but now let's say you want now to count people who tested hiv positive for the past five years, you know? So you, you take all of them until now, you put all of them together. You cannot, you can no more call it incidence because you have uh, those cases are cumulative. Now, when the cases are cumulative, it's the example of COVID. Now, you, do you see the way we report COVID? We say since the beginning of the epidemic, we have maybe, 120,000 cases. Now, because we are counting from the beginning of the epidemic until now, when those cases become cumulative, it is no more incidence, it becomes the prevalence because you are having all the cases and the new cases all combined. You can put your phone here. You do understand? So, thanks, thanks, yeah. thanks, Prof. I understand. Yeah. So if you, when you are only identifying new cases only, let's say how many new okay. cases for this past month, how many new, then that's the incidence. Or maybe or, uh, how many new cases uh, for this year or for this period, you know, outside, uh, out of a specific number of people. So that's the incidence. But when you, you have all the new and the, all the cases all combined, it's no more incidence, it becomes prevalence. Um, okay, Prof. So if, I, if, if yes. I hear you correctly, Prof, a good example maybe would be that case of the Klebsiella here with the hospital that affected the, only the, the pediatrics ward yes. only. Yes. That was the incident. Yes, so, so those were new cases that appeared. Yeah, but then if Thank you, you want, so much. Yeah, if you want to put all the Klebsiella cases that we have seen until now, you have to speak about prevalence because you have all new and the old all mixed up. Okay. Okay. So, okay. so um, we are discussing descriptive studies. We spoke about ecological study. 
we spoke about uh, a cross-sectional study or prevalence study, and we spoke about the incidence study. Uh, are we clear about uh, uh, those three? Because we remain about two case series and case reports, because we have five um, types of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, descriptive studies. We are clear about an ecologic study, prevalence study, incidence study. Okay. The, then uh, the fourth type is what we call down case series. So case series is also a descriptive study. But then here, what, what we are saying is that uh, we are looking at the relationship between the exposure and, and, and the outcome you know, we, without having a control group, but we are looking at the relationship between an exposure and the outcome, and we are measuring it at different points in time. You know, so we are measuring it at different points in time. I will clarify that when we will talk about a cohort study, because you need to, to make a difference between case series and the cohort study. In a cohort study, you have a control group, you have a group that is exposed and a group that is not exposed. Then you follow the two group to try to see, to measure the outcome. But in a case series, you only have one group of people. And in that okay. one group, you then uh, try to see um, what will be the outcome. Okay. Then yesterday, we also spoke about the case report. Case report where we say it's a detailed report of an individual patient. It's mainly done in a clinical research where you can look at, maybe you do a document review, you do an interview, you look at the lab results, you look at the X-ray results about that one patient. You detail, you report that case with much more details. So that's what we call a case report. So those five are different types of descriptive study. And I hope you're staying in as much as you can. So those are five types of descriptive study. So if you want to do a descriptive study, I repeat, <clears throat> all you will need is to have research questions. You don't need to have an hypothesis. You need to have a research question because descriptive study are studies that will help you at the end to generate an hypothesis. They are not studies that help you to test the hypothesis. In a descriptive study, you are not testing any hypothesis. So that's why you don't need an hypothesis, but you need a research question. And the descriptive study help you to respond to the question uh, to help you to assist to establish the relationship that exists between who, where, when, in a relation to what. So we say that what is the outcome of interest, who, when, where are the independent variables. So you want to establish that relationship. So you want to characterize, to describe the characteristics of a population, okay, without having any the group to compare with no control group, nothing. Okay, so that's a descriptive study. And we say that we have five types of them. You can do a cross-sectional, that is a prevalence study. It is snapshot, you know, you do it at one point in time. Or you can do an incidence study where you only identify new cases. Or you can do a, 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 a uh, uh, what, what we call it, um, uh, a case series or a case report, you know, or a necologic study where you are actually uh, not looking for um, individual people that are part of the study, but you are looking at a population of a city A versus a population in a city B then you try to look at the, the characteristics 
like we gave an example of characteristic of malaria in Pumalanga and the Northern KwaZulu Natal. Then we look at the temperature, precipitation, vegetation, population mobility, and so on, and the number of household, and so on. Uh, so that becomes an ecologic study. So all those five types of study design are descriptive study design. So when you speak, uh, you want to write on your proposal, you, 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 you write your method, I'm going to do a quantitative research, then uh, uh, the design will be maybe a cross-sectional descriptive study design. You understand? So that, that's a how you write in your proposal. A method, you will do a quantitative study. You can describe it a little bit in a paragraph or so. Then study design, I'm going to do maybe an ecological descriptive study, or I'm going to do a cross-sectional descriptive study design, or I'm going to do case series, or I'm going to do a case report. You understand? So that is your study design. Then you will continue then giving your study population, your study setting, your instrument, you know, then you keep describing. But you need to understand what is your method, what is your study design. So it needs to be very clear because the way you are going to collect data to achieve that will be different. Um, is there any question? before we move uh, into analytical studies. Yes, Casey. Yes, so thank you. Then in this case, if we say, if we are doing descriptive study, then in the method, we'll just write the descriptive study, nothing more than that. But in the, the that is in the methodology, uh, I don't know. In method, we'll say it is a descriptive study, but in design, we'll say descriptive or cross-sectional or this. No, the, 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 method, the method is a quantitative research. Quantitative research, oh, only qualitative or quantitative in the method. Yeah. In the design, what part of this, do, that one? Then, uh, it is, then uh, you, 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 it's a quantitative method, but then in your design, you need then to specify what will be the design. Is it a cross-sectional descriptive? Or mm. it's a, um, a, 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 a ecological study or case yeah. series or case report? Mm. So those are the study design. Um, oh, okay. So sometimes you combine it with method and design. Then you can say, then you describe, you say, I will be doing a quantitative uh, study um, using a descriptive cross-sectional design. Mm. Then okay. you try to explain a little mm. bit on how you intend to do it. Okay. No, no, it's fine. No, no, always that is a, something, it always confuses method. So whether it is qualitative or quantitative, that is finished. Then in design, we give the detailed one. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Then that's why sometimes people just may put it in under one subtitle. You know, uh, yeah. uh, method and design. Okay. Yeah, method and design. Mm -hmm. So you then say your method is uh, quantitative, your design is descriptive, cross-sectional, or um case series or case reports or ecological study okay you understand mm -hmm. yeah so if your method is a qualitative study if your method is qualitative then your your design then can be either grounded theory or you know, phenomenology, you know, or ethnography. So those are the design, okay? Yeah. yeah. That are associated with a qualitative study, a qualitative yeah. method. But in a quantitative method, 
um, your method is quantitative, your design can be either descriptive or analytic. Now, if it's descriptive, you then need to say which one among the five descriptive design that we have discussed. Yeah, okay. Is it fine? Fine, fine, fine. fine. Yeah. Uh, any other question before we move into analytical design? We want to assure that you all understand your descriptive design because they are commonly used uh, studies. Okay. Yes, uh, Isa. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I, I want to ask a question about uh, one study I, I, I led. Mm. Uh, six months ago. Yes. Uh, I I report I report a case about the children, mm. eleven years old, <coughs> who who developed a, a, a thrombo a, a, and a, a myocardial infarction. Oh, he had uh, twelve years with a myocardial infarction. Yes, 12 to 11 uh, years old. Mm. He developed a myocardial infection mm. post uh, surgical. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, mm. It was. It was. It was. Uh, the reason was uh, the thrombosis. The the, mm. the thrombosis. Uh, yeah. yeah. The high. The high. The high number of uh, plaquettes. Mm. Yeah. After surgical. The high was, uh, was platelet, 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 uh, yeah. platelet. Uh, sorry. Yeah. So my question is: uh, the, there was uh, a report case. Mm. So, so that's a case oh, report. No. That's a case report. No. Okay. Yeah. So that's a descriptive study, but it's a case report. Now you, you are now going to present it with more details, try to get all information about that child, um, about the result, lab result, uh, uh, if there was an ECG done, uh, if there was an X-ray okay. done, all the information about that child, you present it, so that's what we call a case report. Okay. Yeah, so your study design is a descriptive case report study. Yeah. Yeah, Jack. Thank you very much. Jack, Jack. You you need to unmute. Yeah. Okay, okay. I have I have uh, a, a question about yeah. uh, descriptive studies. Yeah. I don't know if there are some conditions when we can elaborate hypotheses into descriptive studies. I don't know if there are some conditions. That is no, my question. Um, you only you can only come with a hypothesis at the end of a descriptive studies because okay. uh, yeah, you do a descriptive study, your aim is to generate an hypothesis at the end, but you, because in a descriptive okay. study, you are not testing an hypothesis. Okay. You, you, are, you are just describing, you are just describing. Okay. Then uh, at the end, from uh, your result, you can then generate an hypothesis. Then if you want to test that hypothesis, you have to do an analytical study. Okay, thank you very much. Thank okay. you. Thank you. So you do an analytic study to test the IP.